the south side. Are you affected by everything that's been happening? Are you overwhelmed? During this time when there's so much focus on our physical health, it's important not to forget about our mental health. With all the changes happening as we overcome this pandemic, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and stressed. living in some place like Chicago where we are in the Midwest and we have uh, all four seasons, right, all year round. Um, what happens when we experience what's, you know, the less light um, within our environment during the season changes? Um, typically, uh, the sun gives us, you know, all this beautiful energy and a lot of us feel joyful when we um, when we get sun and so when we experience those time changes and transition and and we don't have as much sun uh, and sunlight out uh, that can change our mood and sometimes um, make us feel more tired right we, it's darker um, at an earlier time so sometimes folks might have more fatigue right because our body and our minds are more so basically being stuck inside affects us that's obvious, but not being able to see nature, it's another thing. Communicating with other human beings, traveling, exploring, trying new things. As a human being, it's instilled in us to have that instinct to explore. Yeah, I don't know, it just made me a really weird person. I sleep for hours on end. I procrastinate a lot now. Also, also very, very fun thing. <laughs> Has your household, like during quarantine, had any effect on your mental health? Yeah. Like the people in my household. Oh yeah, they all suck. They're like really mean people. So the best thing to do during this time is to make the best out of it. Just find things to do where you are. Try to reach out to people you know. Maybe even get creative, raise your creative talent. Don't let the quarantine get the best of you. Hello and welcome back to Real World News at Home Edition. It is uh, me, Julian Garcia again. And for this episode, we're gonna talk about the election results and just the election in general. Now, as you may know, this year was a very different year and we were in a very different situation than ever before with the election, that mean with COVID-19. And it made us um, have to adjust to new situations. Was it safer? to mail in or was it safe enough to do it physically and um, we're gonna ask some people basically what they thought and not just that we're also gonna talk about the election itself because we have the results and we know who won it was a very controversial year and we just want to see how the mass audience feels and how uh, real people feel the people who voted how the experience was what people think about the results so we're gonna find that out right now we have some interviews that we'd like to show of um, some reporters who, rec who uh, recorded interviews with certain people who voted. And now we're gonna see um, what things were like. So let's cut to them. Hi, how were these elections? And um, these elections for this year were a little bit different because we had uh, COVID. Um, so there was a few options to <clears throat> to cast your vote. So um, the one method that I used was just to go in early, and I went and voted um, 
like two weeks prior to the elections, um, there was um, a few uh, members in the in the place where you vote. Uh, there was one person receiving you, and then there was like this uh, table where you where you provide your documents, uh, showing proof of your that you're that you can vote, and then. That's where they give you your, your ballot and then you go in and wait for one of the uh, places where you cast your vote uh, so you can go in and do your options or you choose your, your candidates. Um, and then once you're done with that, then you go in and, and put in the, um, the ballot into the system. So... I think that these elections were more uh, communicated. Like there, there was more communication to about the elections. Uh, there, there was uh, there was this urge for people to actually vote. Um, there was the, all the types of ways you can vote. You know, early voting um, at the different locations you had to you could vote uh, you could vote the day of or you could uh, some states were allowed to um, send their votes through the mail so I think that that was something different from the previous elections uh, where you only you only voted probably on the day of um, I mean I, I'm pretty sure those options Early voting and all the other options were available at that time, but they were not um, advised or advertised as 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 the as this year. So that is that is all I have. Thanks. They said I don't like Trump. Trump better not win. I hate Trump. Biden better win, or else something. So I felt very confused about the election. I felt um, pretty hopeless, um, and it made me kind of sad. Really, to see all those states that were red states blew my mind. How could so many people be supporting um, a person that stands for so much hate? So much hate in this world, and really all we need is love. We need a lot more of that. And even with the President Biden winning the election, we're not halfway where we should be as a country. Hey, good afternoon, guys. My name's Erica. So these elections were a little bit different with COVID. There was a lot a, of social distancing requirements. Therefore, a lot of, there was a lot of um, mail-in voting compared to the last elections. Also, these elections, I feel like there was a higher turnout of young voters and Hispanic or Latino voters as well compared to the last elections. Um, because of the mail-in voting, these elections have, have had a lot of controversy, um, whereas the last elections, we knew who the winner was right away and there was kind of an acceptance of that which we still don't have a um, clear winner still up to now. So I think that was it. I think that's the biggest difference between the last and these elections. And that is this week's episode of Real World News and we'll see you next week. Um, how I'd sum up remote learning in one word? Isolated. Stressful. Boring. Tiring. Irritating. Um, so, yeah. Um, I have not been able to meet new people, and I don't really talk to a lot of people, so... I don't really talk to a lot of my classmates. I keep my inner circle really close. Um, it's not an environment that's very 
conducive to meeting new people. The biggest difference between remote learning and regular learning is the isolation. Like, in regular learning, even if it's a class where I don't know anybody, I might make the occasional joke or something. But in remote learning, I could know everybody in the class, but there's still not going to be like that joking atmosphere or that like quietly talking one-on-one -on -one during class. Not even once, because anything you type is for everybody to read and that's a distraction, so can't do too much of that. It really feels different when you've been in the same room all day going to four different classes. Um, instead of picking up your books and actually transitioning into the next room for your next class. Um, the biggest difference I've noticed between remote and regular learning is that um, when we were at school, it was a lot more motivating and a lot more fun. And then here it's kind of like remote is just like, you got to do this and that and then that's it. And sometimes all we need is to talk with our friends and we can't even do that on remote learning so it's a little harder. The teaching style hasn't really changed in remote learning and I sort of wish it would. Um, it's really hard to teach a class when you can't make eye contact with 99% of them. Um, but teachers are trying to do the exact same thing that they're used to and it's just not working. I mean, the teachers, it's been, I feel like it's easier for the teachers because they don't get disrupted as much as in class with people talking and stuff. My teachers have been reaching out by sending emails and that's really much it. Some teachers message my parents if there's something going on, um, but usually it's just by emails. Teachers are trying to like spread things out take things more slow, makes it easier to make sure I know what's happening because we keep going over it so I don't get left behind. <laughs> so I like that. It's a little bit of both. I think it's better and worse because it's just you have to be able to put more attention into the class and have more of an attention span because the classes are longer now. Uh, so it's, it's difficult. But I think it helps and gives us more time to feel like to let the teachers give more of a chance to teach the subject that they have to.